Manhattan District Attorney dropped part of the criminal sexual assault case against Harvey Weinstein on Thursday after evidence emerged that cast doubt on the account of one of his three accusers provided to the grand jury. The development was announced in court Thursday with Weinstein looking on. The tossed charge involves allegations made by one of the three accusers in the case, Lucia Evans, who was among the first women to publicly accuse Weinstein of sexual assault. In an expose published in the New Yorker one year ago Wednesday, Evans accused Weinstein of forcing her to perform oral sex when they met alone in his office in 2004 to discuss her fledging acting career. At the time, Evans was a 21-year-old college student. Assistant District Attorney Joan, a woman, Aluzi Arbonne told the judge that prosecutors wouldn't oppose dismissal of the count in the case involving Evans. Hmm. She insisted that the rest of the case involving the two other accusers was strong. In short, Your Honor, we are moving full steam ahead, she said. Weinstein's lawyer, Benjamin Brafham, told the judge that he believed Evans had lied to both the grand jury and to the New Yorker about her encounter with Weinstein. He also said that he believed that a police detective had corruptly attempted to influence the case by keeping a witness from testifying about her misstatements. You see where this is going? Details of the potential problems with Evans' testimony were not discussed in court, but were expected to be included in court filings to be unsealed later that day. Weinstein's lawyers and prosecutors had been wrangling over the part of the indictment pertaining to Evans' allegations over the last few weeks in a closed-door meetings and sealed court papers. Brafman said that the inconsistencies in Evans' accounts were initially discovered by a fact-checker at The New Yorker. In a statement, a lawyer for Evans said that she was disappointed by the DA's decision to abandon her. Let me be clear. The decision to throw away my client's sexual, account, uh, sexual assault charges says nothing about Weinstein's guilt or innocence, nor does it reflect on Lucia's consistent allegations that she was sexually assaulted with force by Harvey Weinstein, said Carrie Goldberg. It only speaks volumes about the Manhattan DA's office and its mishandling of my client's case. So she accused him of forcibly sexually assaulting her. Weinstein, who has denied all allegations of non-consensual sex, still faces charges over allegations that he raped an unidentified woman in his hotel room in 2013. Rape. Forcibly. And performed a forcible sex act on a different woman in 2006. Forcible. He has pled not guilty and is free on a million dollars bail. Images of Weinstein in handcuffs were seen by many women as a cathartic movement in the Me Too reckoning. How is just seeing somebody in handcuffs cathartic? Because that was not cathartic with other people that look like us. It was not cathartic with them. They wanted them in jail. They wanted them locked up. So seeing him in handcuffs should not be enough. But hey, who am I? The collapse of part of the case against him could mean trouble for the prosecutor. You see the fix? You, you see? You see what's happening? You see how they're orchestrating this? Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus R. Vance has already been fiercely criticized for declining to prosecute Weinstein when an Italian model accused him of grabbing her breasts in 2015. At the time, Vance cited a lack of supporting evidence despite the existence of a clandestinely made recording of Weinstein discussing the episode with the woman. So Weinstein admitted on tape and they still declined to press charges. Peep that. In the months after the New York Times and the New Yorker began publishing stories about Weinstein's interactions with women, activists pressured Vance. That's the only reason why. Pressured Vance to bring charges as dozens of people came forward with claims of sexual misconduct against him. New York police officer, officials poured on the pressure too, saying that publicly that they believed that he had gathered, that they had gathered ample evidence to make an arrest. So do you see what's happening here? Okay. Why Kevin Spacey may not be found guilty. Whatever your opinion of superstar actor Kevin Spacey, 59, as an alleged sexual abuser or serial offender, the Nantucket, Massachusetts prosecutor's current case against him is inherently flawed. You see? You see? Okay. Prosecutors like defense attorneys don't choose the facts in their case, they inherit them. As in any case, it's a lawyer's ability to minimize detrimental facts while magnifying favorable ones that dictate the outcome. Here, prosecutors have a lot of work to do if they are to secure a conviction. Spacey appeared in court on Monday morning for the first time to face a single felony count of indecent assault and battery. The charge stems from an incident in July 2016 involving a then 18-year-old busboy. Spacey's attorneys entered a plea of not guilty. The next court date is scheduled for March 4th. Make no mistakes about it, there will be a trial. But based on the evidence currently known from the accused's criminal complaint, it does not appear that this is going to be an open and shut case. 
That it took his accusers several months to report the incident is least of the prosecution's concern. Many victims delay reporting. They may feel ashamed, humiliated, and, and or embarrassed. A victim may also have a strong privacy concerns. Still, a jury will have many questions. Prosecutors will need to explain why the accuser told Spacey he was a 23-year-old college student and why he changed clothes to return to the bar at the conclusion of his, sit of his shift to meet Spacey while having multiple drinks with him. Prosecutors may argue that he was a starstruck 18-year-old who was blinded by a celebrity. A reasonable argument indeed. This might also explain the excessive drinking and prolonged conversation with Spacey. Prosecutors will no doubt assert that the accuser was just enjoying a night out with a celebrity while harmlessly being showed, showered with attention when things began to turn. They may add that Spacey is to blame for using his celebrity to entice an unassuming victim. That would be yet another reasonable argument. Prosecutors could also assert that the busboy assented to Spacey's advances because he was simply embarrassed or didn't wish to be rude or impolite. But at the heart of the prosecutor's case is whether Spacey acted with or without consent. Faced with other details from the accused's complaint, the jury will begin to question steps the young man took to signal his refusal or displeasure with such an action. Okay, so it just goes on and on and on. Um... And so, oh, and let me just add this. Then there's the detail of Spacey rubbing the accuser's penis for three minutes. A dramatic three-minute pause in a courtroom by defense will make this a truly will make one truly appreciate how long that time is. Okay, so it just goes on and on to pretty much dispel uh, uh, why the the accuser should be believed. Um, let's read this part. A wild card in this case is what evidence the judge permits a jury to hear about Spacey's prior alleged misdeeds. So this prior misdeeds. Okay. If the judge allows the jury to hear evidence of other sexual misconduct, a jury is not likely to look kindly upon Spacey, just as Bill Cosby. But if the judge disallows this evidence and the case is about what happened at the bar involving the accuser, the prosecutor will have a lot of explaining to do. In a criminal case, proof of guilt beyond a reasonable doubt is what's required. That's a pretty high standard to reach. And the way I see it, that standard is not met by these facts. Based on the evidence currently available, it looks like Spacey could be found not guilty. So you see what's going on here. They're setting the scene, like, like in the movies. Picture this. I'm setting the scene of not guilty. I'm interested to see what the outcome of this case is going to be because you you read or you heard me read where they said that it's cathartic just to see him in handcuffs. But in other cases, when the complainants or the, 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 the defendants look like us, it's not cathartic just to see them in handcuffs. It's cathartic when that person is behind bars with no uh, uh, ability to return back to society. So like I said, I'm just going to keep that same energy, especially when these accusers are standing up in court, pointing their fingers and telling their stories. So I'm going to keep that same energy and let you know what's going on in these cases.